In version two, we're going to be moving the ball. We can still move the bat, but the ball doesn't know anything about it. Um, so it's not very exciting. But we're moving the ball and we're controlling a score text box. Every time it hits the top, that goes up by one. Notice, up by one. Up by one. In Animate, we've simply added a score underscore txt as a dynamic text. The type is dynamic text, not static. I've set it to Arial Black and 45 pixels and a text color of a light gray. So that is, that's going to control how we display our score. So let's see how our code has changed. So if we go to version two of the game, if you, if you do create versions with different names, then your export root name is going to change. Notice how here it's called Pong V2, whereas if I go to, to index for uh, version one, it's Pong V1. The, the, the library is automatically given the name that you give to the FLA. So if you keep changing the FLA, then your export root name for lib dot whatever um, will change. Something to bear in mind that. Uh, it's quite useful to cre create different versions, but if you keep using the same index.html file, then you'll find it won't be able to load it in. It won't be able to find it. So all you, all you need to do is just change the name that's being used for export root. And if you're not quite sure what the name is, then if you go into the export pong.js that's kept its same name the name that you've given to it in the published settings but if you search for this line that says stage content then that'll be the name that you should be referring to it as because that is your your stage so just do a quick search for stage content and the line below that will give you the name of the library that you should be using in your html file okay just useful to know that because it's quite frustrating if you do a small change and you've got to rewrite your um, HTML file every time. Just that very, very small change there. Okay, let's have a look at game.js. What's changed here? Well, we now have a new ball method and that takes the ball's origin, which we've saved. If you recall, we've saved that in the init method. That's the new ball. So we've got an origin for it where it appears in your animate project. And we've got a move ball method. So in our update, we've now got two things happening. One is move ball and the other is update score. Update score is simply creating a string, which is at least three characters long. And that's going to be the score appended to 000. So it's going to be a string. And this will this which is a number will be converted into a string. So when it's, for example, 26, it's going to be too long. So this little line here makes it so that it is only three long. And then we set the text property of score underscore txt, that's our dynamic text box, to this string. So it will constantly update the score based on our score property of this game class. If we add one to the score, this method here will ensure that that's displayed on the screen. Here we calculate how far the ball will move in the x direction and the y direction on every frame. We use the math class which has got a random method. The random generates a number between zero and one. We multiply that by two and then subtract one. So we get a number in the range minus one to one. So the X value is a number between minus one and one. And the Y value just uses math random. So that's a number between zero and one. So at this stage, we've got a move value that's randomly calculated where x is between minus 1 and 1 and y is between 0 and 1. Now we want 
it to always seem to be moving at the same speed. So we're going to do a little processing to that, which is what we're doing here. And in order to explain that, let's have a look at some. So supposing our move X is going to be three and our move Y is going to be four, then how far distance are we going to move in each frame? Well, that uses Pythagoras' theorem. And that is if we multiply this value by itself, three times three, and we add this value multiplied time by itself, four times four, and then we take the square root of that, so three times three is nine and four times four is 16, add them together, you've got 25. Square root of 25 is five. So the distance it's gonna move, imagine the ball being here and then the ball being there. Yeah, that's how far it's gonna move in one frame. But we want that distance to be 10. That's the speed we want the ball moving at on every frame. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna divide our Y value and our X value by the length it's gonna move. So the length it's gonna move is now one by dividing the, the Y side and the X side by the value we previously had as the full distance. And then if we multiply that by however far we want this to be, then we've got the real value that we need for Y and the real value we need for X. So what we're doing here is we're calculating the length it'll move in one, in one frame by using the square root, remember we saw the square root on the diagram, of its move X times its move X, so the X value multiplies by itself, plus the Y value move multiplied by itself. So do you recognize that that now is Pythagoras? We divide the X value and the Y value by the length of the full distance it's gonna move in one frame, which is the mag, we've saved it as a constant mag. So now we've got the movement it's gonna do in one frame, it's gonna be a unit. We call that normalizing. And then we're gonna say, well, our speed is gonna be 10. We could change that to 20 now, or we could change that to 15. I mean, I'd I encourage you to play with that to see the ball moving at different speeds. And then to get to ensure that our move values are now calculated correctly, we multiply the X and Y value of our move vector by this speed. So first of all, we normalize it, and then we multiply it by its speed. So that's what, what happens when we get a new ball. Then in our move ball method, which is called in the update method, so remember the update method is called once every frame. So we're gonna call move ball. With move ball, we're adding the value of move X to the X value of our ball, the X position of our ball. And we're adding the move Y value to the Y position. And then we're calculating whether or not it's hit a wall. So before we look at this code, let's look at some more diagrams. Okay, supposing our movement is minus three in the X and four in the Y. That means the ball is going in this direction. And we're quite happy with it doing that until it gets to this point here. So halfway along, remember that it's been, the ball is being updated minus three in the, the X and four in the Y. So when X equals 80, is X less than half the ball width? Well, half the ball width is 27. But X is 80, so it's not. So at that point there, this isn't going to happen. But at that point there, X is 20. Half the ball width is 27. So X is less than 27. So we need to flip the value of X. Instead of it being minus 3, we're going to change it to 3. So it's now going to start going in that direction. So our movement vector is now 3 in the X and 4 in the Y. The Y stays, has been stayed the same. So let's think about the Y now. Y here is at 350. Is Y greater than the screen height plus half the ball height? Well, it's not gone off the screen height, has it? 
so so this doesn't apply but at this point here is it greater than the screen height is y greater than the screen height plus half the ball height well yes it is so what we want to do now is we want to make our y value negative so we need to flip our y value so move y equals minus move y which is this instance is minus four so now the ball's going back up the screen because the y values are shrinking remember it's zero at the top and screen height at the bottom and for the x value zero on the left and screen width on the right so at this point here as, as y is moving up is is y less than half the ball height well it's not is it so we move on is y less than half the ball height here yes it is because the ball height is well 54 so half of that is 27 y is 20 so that's less than 27 so we need to flip our value of y again so now it's heading off in this direction x is stayed incrementally so it's going that way y is now caused it to start heading down the screen so now we need to check whether or not it's hit this side is x greater than screen width minus half the ball width no at this point yes it is so bounce off and go in that direction so that considers what happens to all the different walls so let's just have a look at the code first of all we're checking what happens for, for x so is ball x less than the ball size width divided by 2 half the ball width or is ball x greater than the stage size width minus half the ball width if it is flip our value for x for the movement vector now we're going to check whether or not it's gone off the screen at the top is the ball y less than the ball side height divided by 2 if so flip the movement vector and add 1 to our score and finally has it gone off the screen at the bottom for that to be the case then the y value has got to be greater than the stage height plus the ball size height divided by 2 in which case flip the value for y and that covers all the movements that need to be done to get your ball moving like that and now it's scored 249 and remember every movement of the ball has got a length of 10 it moves a distance of 10 each time because that's what I've set the speed to just out of interest if we change the speed to 20 here save it go back to our browser now it's moving at 20 if I change it to 2 save it and it's moving really really slowly but it's still doing exactly the same code okay so I hope you've learned uh, how to move a ball around useful for lots of things that bounce off the edge and the Pythagoras for calculating the distance between two things is used all the time <laughs> literally all the time even applies to 3d so you can find the distance between three-dimensional things by just adding a, a z value okay let's pause there and come back in a minute this video was from the course create html5 games using adobe animate to get the full course at a great discount pull down the description and follow the link